So what's up with the DMZ, eh? Somebody's getting it, somebody's getting my love. I was teaching a class of uh, advanced students yesterday and we started a new chapter in our new book and it's on um, life and environment around you and because we were talking about that I, I went on YouTube in search of videos of animals in South Korea and was unfortunately unable to find anything outside of um, the animals in the DMZ which is great oh there's a quail talking about animals in the DMZ there went the quail and my dog went a little ballistic because he goes a bit cuckoo when he sees birds flying around so what's up with the DMZ it's a relatively long stretch of land that goes from the east to the west side of the Korean Peninsula dividing the North and the South Koreas it's quite wide it is said that it's uh, one of the most dangerous places in the world because uh, of the number of landmines that are scattered throughout the region which is one of the reasons why nobody ever goes in there because nobody really knows where these mines were planted and what this absence of human activity does is provide a perfect habitat for wildlife for animals migrating back and forth so the DMZ is home to some of the um, rarest animals I guess in in the world so one of them was the um, red crowned crane which is said to be the largest the heaviest out of all the cranes in existence and uh, its numbers are diminishing but the DMZ is home to to this species of birds um, I think it may have the largest number of them out of all the places uh, wherever else they do exist in the world the other rarity was a black hat Fisher King I want to say correct me if I'm wrong but I think that's the bird there are different kinds of or there are different uh, varieties of the Fisher King uh, bird but uh, the black hat one is particular to the DMZ region there's a goat slash deer looking like type animal which lives in the mountains there on the border um, there's about uh, 10 black bears oh no sorry 10 tigers that are uh, rumored to be roaming in those regions wildlife conservationists found tracks that they couldn't really place they couldn't really identify so they presumed that it was either black bears or uh, tigers I guess either one of these animals would be a good thing to find because both of them are pretty rare the video also mentioned that uh, the black bears have been nearly hunted to extinction in the, to extinction in Pakistan just a few years ago um, uh, the black rhino went extinct um, in South Africa it was kind of weird to experience that I um, stumbled upon the report and I saw that there were maybe I don't know there were only a few of these rhinos left and then a couple of months later I saw another report saying that uh, the black rhino has become has officially become extinct and it's a strange feeling to like I know this happens all the time I think there's a you know there's an animal species that becomes extinct on a regular basis but it was weird to be kind of witness to to this happening to be aware of this fact that one of these animals simply just vanished it ceased to exist due to human activity mainly so what's the deal with the DMZ why is it there why is it being preserved well we know why it's there it's because of the two nations haven't been at war for so many years now there is a it seems that there is a potential for the North and South Korea's to reunite which means that DMZ once again might become a place where people can go a few weeks ago I read an article about uh, North and South Korea merging train tracks which would clearly allow for um, for regular commute between the two countries and which means that they would have to I guess enter some kind of production construction arrangement um, and start digging up the, through the DMZ unless they're planning on building another tunnel or maybe they could, could use one of the North Korean tunnels alleged that are in existence whatever the case may be uh, the DMZ right now uh, is a wildlife refuge and if it came to be that North and South do unite what will happen to all this in South Korea over the years you know I've always wondered uh, when I first came here I didn't see a lot of wildlife you know it was always said that most of the wildlife was killed off during the Korean War 
either by military activity or or civilian activity who was trying to survive and they would kill and eat almost anything and everything. Nonetheless, I was told that there were very few animals and indeed I did see very few animals out on the streets here in South Korea up until just a few years ago when I started seeing hawks and uh, smaller rodents on the street, which again, I've never seen before. I see quails now occasionally in places. Um, uh, there are goats, there are wild boars. The wild boars I have not seen yet, but I did read reports of people encountering wild boars and it was said that you know wild boars can get pretty dangerous. I think it was in the news farmers having to deal with wild boars uh, rummaging through their, their farm fields and, and whatnot. Come here. And it always perked my interest to see all these animals suddenly appear all over the place. And I, I thought to myself, you know, like Korea is a pretty heavily forested nation. I don't know what the percentage is, but wherever you look, there are mountains that are covered in, or hills. There are hills and slash mountains that are covered in, in trees and grass and greenery. So um, there should be enough habitat for animals to be. Yes, granted it's a small country, but uh, the neighborhoods and the cities are kind of scattered sporadically between those hills and the, the forest. So where are these animals coming from? I assume that most of them are being driven out of out from out from their habitats by construction and development uh, new streets and new highways there's a lot of highways that have been built since 2005 obviously Korea has developed drastically so there's a lot of streets and a lot of buildings and other types of developments that were built over the past 10 years over the past decade and I assume that's one of the reasons why most of the animals are coming out in the open. Birds, wild boars and all kinds of wildlife that used to be hidden away in the forest are now forced out on the streets and get run over by cars. There's a lot more deer that you see. I've seen a number of roadkill. Granted, you know, you see a lot of stuff when you're stuck in a place for, for extended durations of time, but uh, nonetheless. My question is, I guess, if the Koreas do unite and start development, what will happen to all the wildlife in the DMZ? That's in addition to, to the plant life. These are just the things that were going through my head as I was watching the video or preparing for the class rather. What would happen to all the animals in the DMZ that are so rare, the animals? Well, the, so is the DMZ, I guess. But what will happen to all these living creatures? And another question I had was, who took all the aerial photos of the DMZ, of all the birds flying around? Unless that were, those were not pictures of the DMZ. This will be it for today's walk and talk. Uh, remember to like, subscribe, leave a comment below, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.